You're watching another Nerd Stalker interview. Welcome to another Nerd Stalker interview. Good morning. This is Greg Gloria, AK Social Greg on Twitter for the Nerd Stalker Media Network. Today we talk with Hessel Van Arshot, uh, the chief noisemaker of Tribe of Noise. And uh, we met Hessel at the SF New Tech event uh, during their Dutch pitch event and wanted to catch up with him on, here on Nerd Stalker to talk about his uh, business and business model to help indie musicians out there. So, hey, good afternoon, Hessel. Thanks for joining us here uh, on Nerd Stalker live from Amsterdam. Netherlands, right? <laughs> Thanks for having me, Greg. It's a it's a real honor to be in your uh, in your show. Well, thank you. Um, well, you know, let's get into this. Uh, you know, we, we were talking offline, and I got to know you a little bit more. But yeah, you know, talk us, tell us briefly about yourself, and you know, maybe how you got into uh, the tribe of noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. Well, we we just discussed this, but I, you know, uh, your your question was like, are you a proper musician? And uh, you know, uh, uh, why are you the chief of noise of, uh, of a music tribe? Um, I'm not. I'm not a musician. I'm uh, actually my background is in 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 IT and in new business models, uh, exponential growth models. So I like to test five new business models and help others. Uh, the rest of my team don't worry about it. The rest of my team are you know musicians, people who hang out in the music space, much cooler than I am, less gray hair. That you know the the cool lot. Uh, what you have to do with me today, um, and uh, how we got started with Tribe of Noise is uh, because we were a bit annoyed by getting proper music into a video production. And the easy story is is that we had the opportunity to uh, call a friend of mine who worked at a major label, and he said, like you know, within your budget, within your time limit, no way that I can give you any music from from a well-known artist or even an upcoming artist that is signed to our label. And so we had to settle for uh, stock music. And if you really want to, you know, piss me off when I'm working on some high energy, nice video productions, then it's, you know, ending up with stock music. We ended up with stock music. Cheap, you know, cheap solution, but it just didn't feel right. So uh, to cut the long story short, uh, this stayed with me for a long time, and at a certain point, uh, point my partner and I said, like, you know, we have to we have to start a marketplace where we can connect proper, well-known musicians with the industry, you know, with videographers, with ad agencies, digital agencies, any professional out there in need for proper music from artists that are willing to put, you know, their soul, their love, their money into a nice production and who are willing to license that music directly to businesses. That's how we got started. And we started with only 200 musicians. So 200 is a lot. <laughs> but, it's a lot. but, you know, fast forward to, to 2015 to today, uh, we just broke uh, the, the 26,000 wow. members. Uh, wow. from 190 countries around the world. So wow. one, one of the things I want to do, Greg, in the, the near future is have a, a little contest up and running because I think, think we're still missing like 30 or 40 countries around the world and then we have like musicians from every single country around the globe. So I, I want to put the, a, uh, um, like a competition out there to find me musicians from countries that are not represented on Tribe of Noise yet. Well, you launched this in 2008, from what I read, right? And that's that's a long time. I mean, you know, I mean, just in anything these days, it's a long time. But but I mean, <laughs> I mean, what was the intention to actually create a community of these people that could get access to this, or or you know, there was like a bigger business play to this in the long term? I mean, you've been at it for seven years, so obviously, you know. It's paid off for you guys. At least kept you guys alive for all these years, right? Yeah. Well, it's it's you know it's not a charity first of all. So it's it's uh, so you know from day one we were trying to figure out new business models for musicians and in the process make money for ourselves. Um, so that's that's the frank answer. Um, the the other thing what we had to do because this is a chicken and egg story, Greg. Uh, I can go out to businesses and say like you know I have this great idea and a vision and musicians will join you and you will make beautiful content and your their music will end up in your beautiful video production or wherever. But if I don't have a community to show off with, then at the end they will say like you know bugger off. 
here's your coffee, go, go somewhere else. So um, we had to build that community first. And it, of course, you know, it took a while because the, f the, the toughest thing in the music business probably is uh, gaining trust and, and explaining to musicians that you don't try to rip them off, that you actually have business models that might work. Uh, it, it, one of the things we said from the start, and I'm, I'm still saying this by the way, is we will never ever charge you money upfront for joining Tribe of Noise or whatsoever. We want a share. When we are successful, we will take a share from the revenue that we make, mm -hmm. and the rest is yours. Very fair. Uh, the other thing is never ever sign exclusively with us, because if we're not going to make any money for you tomorrow, then hopefully somebody else is going to do that for you. So, and if we have like several competitors doing exactly the same thing, and if you join all of them, then hopefully every single month there's enough money coming in to make, you know, to make a living. Mm -hmm. And I will hopefully be able to start making phone calls in a year or so to some of our, you know, top artists who are making enough money, um, so that I can, you know, pick up the phone, call them, and say like, you don't have to, but if you want to, you can give up your daytime job because you're making enough money via Tribe of Noise. And those models are in place. Those models are now, you know, scaling. Um, and they have really done some some out of the box thinking. And uh, as opposed to, you know, the, all the platforms that you see out there focusing on consumer markets, we've been focusing on B two B models because we think that's where the money is. Well, you know, it's it's interesting as as, as we talked about offline a little bit that, um, you know, the the music industry. I mean, I go to this thing called SF Music Tech every year. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, you know, Brian Ziss puts it on um, every year um, and, and some years twice a year. But, but you know, the music uh, licensing thing <laughs> seems very complicated to me. I mean, and I, I think this is kind of like maybe your answer to make it less complicated for these indie musicians, right? It, well, the, and I, I didn't like have it prepared, but there, there is an image where it shows like it, it almost looked like a bowl of spaghetti with, with all the lines drawn to all the rights holders. And it, it really looks ridiculous and, and, and it's very complicated. So what we try to do is start from you know a scratch of paper and say like uh, uh, you have rights holders on one hand side, you have people with money on the other hand side who want to buy a license. What do we actually need in the middle? And since 2008, since the beginning, we started with uh, two legal advisors within our team and four law firms, you know, uh, one in the States, one in the UK, two in Holland, to, to test drive the, the, the legal framework, like all the ins and outs, like, you know, where is it not going to work? Where is it going to work? What do we have to solve together with performing rights organizations or labels or, you know, any entity within the music space? But, but, and that was the hard part, because uh, if you look at, let's take a beautiful service like um, uh, Spotify or, or, or Deezer, what they've done is, is a beautiful front-end layer, uh, you know, the interface, the, the user experience, the, the way we consume music, it's beautiful, it's really, you know, outstanding. Uh, what they haven't done uh, is, 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 is fix the back-end. So all the, you know, the, the contracts and the legal framework and everything is still in place from the same old traditional music industry. So that's also probably why you see that, that the money they pay out to the artists is, is divided by, you know, some of the money goes to performing rights organization, most of the money goes to labels, other shareholders, and then in the end, depending on the contracts that they have with the musicians, some of their money ends up with, with musicians. In our case, it was like let's work with the musicians from the you know from from day one, and if they want to allow other folks in between, like their manager or a label or a publishing company, they're more than willing, and you know, if they can comply with, with what we offer. But the musician is you know in control of uh, their own way forward. Wow. Yeah. And and you know, I, when when. When you know, and and the music scene here is just like any other city, right? It has a really local vibe, local local thing. And you, if you, and obviously there's been some famous musicians out of San Francisco Bay Area here, to, to say the least. But, but I, I think I, I think that you know what you know, I think to have a path like yours to to allow myself to at least contemplate 
making some money off of some of the creative things that I've done. And, and, and like you said, test drive. I like that word, test drive some of those things. You know, it's interesting. But, you know, as a person that shoots, you know, you know, semi-pro video, I agree with you. I, I think I was always frustrated when I went to some of the sites. And, and then you had this creative commons layer on top of things that, you know, okay, you could do, you could use my stuff if you decide to just, you know, mention me on your, on your, on your creative thing, whatever that is. Right. And, and, you know, that's kind of cool. And that, that, that's kind of a nice thing, but you know, at the end of the day, like you said, the musician isn't making any money. And, and on the other side, if you want to go sign with a label, there's all these guys with their hands in the pot, as, as you're saying, and I'll say it for you so you don't get in trouble, but, <laughs> but, but all these guys with their hands in the pot. And, and actually that's like, that's, that's also like it in Hollywood. You know, it, it's no different. The infrastructure there is almost, almost <laughs> the same. You know, I, I I have like you know good good friends who work for music labels and uh, who work at publishers, and and they all do you know a great job, but it's it's very it, it's not a very transparent world. Let's let's put it that way. So uh, just to give you an example, what we've one of the models that we've built is um, music streaming from our services uh, servers, curated by our uh, music department uh, via the internet into shopping malls, stores, bars, restaurants, and all the other places, like a background music service. And because we control the whole pipe in and know exactly that, you know, if, if my end client is a, you know, a, a local bakery around the corner, I know exactly if he's turning to channel one, channel two, and what song is being played at that exact time on that exact date. I can also pay out the artist directly for the amount that, that you know, that, the, the, the airtime that they had on these channels. Um, that whole pipeline in and pipeline out helps me to actually, you know, pay for play. Uh, many of the rights organizations and many of the labels and, and, and publishing companies, they don't have like an automated system in place or, or you know, the, 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 the technology, the IT backbone. So what they do is uh, they will listen to national radio and national television because they get the playlist from them and they will say like, uh, that, you know, that will probably be the same in uh, the Marriott hotels around the world, or uh, you know, your local Tesco's, um, which isn't the case because they play different music. So th that's one of the models, and this is just one of the examples where, and this is only done by, by you know, we have to test it because we, you know, we don't first of all know if your local bakery around the corner is interested in uh, unknown, completely unknown, but quality musicians. So you know, we have to 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 go out there and do sales and, and marketing and see if they like it. They do. Uh, we have signed with one of the largest telecom operators in the Netherlands who are now reselling this this business model to their end clients, so to their businesses. And, uh, um, and then we have to figure out, like, do we have enough music and musicians who are actually can be featured in those music channels as being proper radio stations for, for businesses uh, and generate money for them? And, and the reason why I'm saying test driving is, is not just us test driving business models and, you know, we throw, throw away the ones that, that didn't work and we keep the ones that do work, but also for musicians, you know. Some musicians, they have beautiful music, but, but to some ears it's, it's, it's noise and to some ears it's, you know, it's totally spot on in the right place at the right time and, and they pay big bucks for it. And that, that differentiator between noise and music, that's, that's well, what I like to call personal opinion. Exactly. Exactly. Well, you know, maybe you can share with the Nerd Talker audience, uh, Hessel, um, you know, some of the, uh, you know, maybe are there examples of some uh, pretty cool things that uh, people have used your music on, uh, you know, either, uh, you know, through a creative piece like a video or a movie or something like that, that you could share with us? Yeah. Well, a couple of things. So, so some of the partnerships that I'm really, uh, you know, uh, thankful of and, and proud of. Uh, so one of them is, uh, you probably know them pretty well because you're based in the States, but that's uh, Getty Images. Uh, uh, so Getty Images is your number one uh, stock photography uh, uh, service for, for hundreds of thousands of clients around the world and, you know, big time. I met with one of their uh, founders, uh, Jonathan Klein, and, 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 and th th there was a click, there was a link, and, and what we've done is we, we are now, together with other music suppliers, are building a new specific catalog for Getty Images uh, with, with 
proper, high quality, real music from real artists as opposed to uh, what I, you know, the reason why I started Tribe of Noise, stock music. That's what I don't want them to sell, so I have to give them an alternative, and the alternative is, you know, unsigned but well quality, recorded, produced, written, uh, and sung uh, music. So that's, that's one thing. We're doing actually the same thing for, and that's funny because they're actually big competitors, uh, Pond5, they're also based in uh, New York. Uh, they just got like, I don't know, uh, roughly 60 million venture capital to really grow the company, so it's, it's, uh, it's becoming big. We're, 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 we're rebuild, rebuilding, that's maybe too big of a word, but we're helping them as well to get like premium content, music content on their platform to their customers. Um, so those two things. One of the most recent things that I'm really proud of, and that's you probably see it in the back of me, but that's oh, uh, Sonos. Yeah, that's the relationship we have with Sonos because uh, I, I love Sonos. Uh, I, well, I, I I like technology. Let's put it that way, and and they're just you know killing me with with beautiful stuff. And uh, um, the cool thing about Sonos is that it will enable me with quality music in in any room, you know, with Deezer, Spotify, Pandora. Uh, iHeartRadio, all these these great services out there to listen to that on, 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 on nice equipment uh, with the interface on my mobile phone. What they what they actually lacked uh, was a streaming music service for enterprises for businesses. Mm-hmm. So what we built is is uh, you know the API connectors and the service on Sonos so that within the Sonos application you can just launch uh, launch. Tribe of Noise, connect Tribe of Noise to Sonos, and use Sonos equipment in your bar, restaurant, fitness area, you know, all the, the, the professional areas, oh, nice. DIY stores, supermarkets, you, you can start using Sonos there as well. Uh, so for them, it's an upscale of, you know, selling more hardware. For us, it's an upscale of, of combining a beautiful brand like Sonos with uh, a Tribe of Noise community with 26,000 artists. Um, and again, you know, fair play, fair pay. So that that, that system is really uh, alive and, and 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 starts to grow at, at, at the moment. Um, so those things are, are really I'm really proud of, of you know combining a dream, a vision, uh, very talented artists with super brands like like Getty Images or Pond Five or Sonos. Is there a, um, you know, one thing I wanted to talk to you is more on maybe now, now that we're kind of entering, you know, like some of the business relationships that you guys have had. And it sounds like you guys have something cooking with Getty that looks like it's going to be pretty cool when, when it all pops out eventually. Um, and that that's probably complicated. So it's, it's going to take a little while to pop out. But, you know, I like to be there when you guys announce that. But, uh, you know, when I thought about it is that you go back to video production again and which really allowed you to start this business out of frustration just like any other business does you're trying to solve a problem you know how how does a uh, like they say an indie videographer or cinematographer uh start to use your 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 stuff it, 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 is it on a scaled uh price point or is it just on a fixed <laughs> fixed price point how, how does that work well we try to 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 uh um to keep it as simple as possible because Actually, basically, what a videographer is doing is trying to to uh, finish a project within you know before a deadline within the budget, and and there's that, there are always issues. You know, there's always like a client who's late with the material or who's not approving it or it's running out of budget. Or so, so they they have their own problem. So the, the what we don't want them to do is give them another one licensing music. So we we've made it more simple. We have two options. Uh, you've mentioned uh, uh, the Creative Commons uh, licensing uh, uh, schemes. So what we've done from day one is building Tribe of Noise, the community website, based on a commercial version of uh, Creative Commons. Because we, what, what we've seen with Creative Commons, and it was very helpful, is to have, to have all these legal advices around the world that will translate uh, you know, the, the legal documents into stuff that you and I can actually read and understand. Uh, in your own language, so that was that was very helpful. So the community website, any you know videographer who who is okay with uh, you know uh, uh, using Creative Commons uh, work, uh, even if it's for commercial use, you can. 
uh, they can go to the community website and start downloading music and they can use it for free as long as they you know give credits to the artist and use similar licenses that we that we use so that's more like an, an engagement with with musicians and also helping them uh, to get free promotion you know to, to get some exposure uh, but we also you know we want to make money on the, at the end of the day together with the musicians so we have a pro version try to launch pro which is um, according to some, including myself, but I'm biased, uh, including to some, one of the best music search engines that you will find online be because of its simplicity. You know, there are a, a couple of filters that you can apply. It's all curated by, by real human beings, so it means like, you know, we, we, we couldn't find any scripts doing it for us, so it's done by proper DJs and proper, uh, you know, what we call the golden ears of uh, Tribe of Most Pro. They listen to every single track, they tag it, and you can find it as a video uh, producer. Like, you know, in, in, a, in, in a few seconds, you will find the track that you need. And then the licensing is uh, down to, basically down to only three licenses. If you want to use it in a digital production, or if you're working on an indie uh, film with, a, with a, like a basic budget, then you only have to pay 200 uh, euros per song for the whole project oh, uh, perpetually all the way. so we never come, yeah so we never come back to you and say like hey you know your time's up you have to pay it's a national uh, television campaign you pay 600 bucks and if you have you want to use it in a global international thingy uh, you pay 1200 um, those price ranges are like dramatically low if you compare it to uh, you know major uh, label repertoire and are uh, on the high end if you compare it with uh, stock uh, music <clears throat> but once again we think that that you know try to compare us with stock music and we probably always win so uh, in that end we could you know raise the bar a bit the cool thing is in the tribe of most pro environment what we've added is is what we call a virtual briefing center so if you are this this creative person working on a new uh, video for, for your customer, like, uh, I don't know, brand engagement video campaign or whatever, and you can't find that specific track or the, you, you find the track but the lyrics are off or, you know, there's something wrong with it, you can brief us by, by using some forms and we will shoot it back to 26,000 musicians and ask them to come up with something better for you. And you, you probably notice that within a few hours, you know, the first ones start to upload stuff because they already have it on the shelf and they think like, oh, oh, he means something completely different. This is what he wants. So we can, you know, shoot like new repertoire that was already uh, on the shelf. And in some cases, people just, you know, go back into the studio, record it with a different lyric or include your brand name or whatever, or take out the drum uh, beat or, or, and, and upload a completely new production specifically for your briefing. So that, that interactivity with, 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 uh. with a real community sets us apart from, from stock databases or any music database that only has music files. We can actually tap into 26,000 composers, singer-songwriters, producers, and, and, and proper musicians who can work on these, these you know, uh, bespoke uh, music files for you. Yeah, yeah, I guess, you know, that's, <laughs> that's better than any search engine that I know of. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Google doesn't even do that for me. So, I, I mean, the fact that it'll actually find the right thing if it isn't there. <laughs> usually, usually with the search engines, they just tell you what's there and it doesn't tell you that you can get anything better, you know. So, uh, yeah. wow, that, that's well, fascinating. Cool, that's always what we say. Like, the cool thing is, like, you know, uh, be careful what you wish for because... <laughs> People will start shooting stuff back to you. We can, we can like, as an edit service, we can filter that for you so that, you know, we only send you the top 10 or whatever. But that, okay. That's well, that's not, well, now, now you said that it's, it's hand curated. So is there, like, a submission process for these uh, uh, developers and, and basically maybe within two hours? Because if you guys have around the world, you must, you must have operations that are going somehow 24 hours a day, right? Well, the, the, funny enough, it, it, it actually works uh, uh, pretty well, although that the team is, is uh, pretty small. But for example, my, my CTO, so the, the, the guy who's building all the APIs and all the connectors to other databases and stuff, he lives in Japan. I'm based in Amsterdam. You know, we have folks running around in other places. So it, it, it does work. Music curation, curation, by the way, is done here from uh, from uh, headquartered here in, uh, in Amsterdam. Okay. Um, 
but yeah, you know, we, we have we have tested with with some of the smartest people in the world to to automate the system of uh, music injection uh, ingestion, but it, it just it just isn't there, you know. And every time if I run into somebody who says like, you know, I really cracked it. This is the algorithm. This is what you're going to use. We test it for a day or a week, and then we just throw it back at them. Like, you know, it's not good enough. We still need human beings to curate your music. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, I think that, you know, at the end of the day, we're still the fastest computing engine on the face of the planet, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I was... Uh, uh, I, I liked the uh, the approach of uh, the guys at uh, Apple Music who were actually acknowledging this. You know, they, they mm. I remember them saying a few years ago, saying like, no, no, we have these great algorithms and we will work it out and the system will recognize patterns and come back to you. And like when they introduced uh, Apple Music, um, you know, th there were some folks mentioning that that you know personal, uh, real human beings uh, uh, curating the music and, and making playlists actually works better god that yeah that, that that it makes a lot of sense you know i yeah. mean i think we get wrapped around our 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 head that everything has to be an algorithm these days so it's uh it's interesting it's actually uh very natural to, to hear something like that from you from a person like you that says oh yeah we do it with human beings but hey is there anything uh, new on uh, tribal noise that you want to tell the uh, nerd soccer audience well, one of the things, and also one of the reasons I was in the States, is because we, we, we signed a deal with one of the largest uh, telco operators in the, in the Netherlands. And what it actually means is that we, uh, you probably have the same thing in the States, but here in Holland, our large telcos, they will bundle uh, Spotify with your uh, mobile phone subscription. And, and it's for stickiness. You know, it means that that as long as you you know stay around or stick around with their uh, subscription, uh, you won't lose any playlist that you made on Spotify or any stuff. So it, it, it makes you more dependent, which isn't a nice word. So that's why it's called stickiness. Um, we we have something similar in Holland, but uh, some of the uh, uh, the carriers, so some of the mobile operators, they want to take it to the next level, and they also want to offer similar services to business clients. So, you know, all the hotel chains and bars and DIY stores and restaurants and, and uh, franchisees. Um, and and you, you can't do that with Spotify or Deezer or any of the other services because they're consumer-oriented services. Their end-user license agreement doesn't allow it in most of the countries around the world. So that's where we came in and said, like, you know, we can do that with the Tribe of Noise Musicians. So it will be a totally different, you know, music experience because the music that you will hear is not Rihanna, it's not, you know, Jay-Z or whatever. It's like completely unknown artists. But for the purpose of, you know, being played in airtime in, in uh, restaurants and bars and other places, it's, it's probably more suitable because, you know, we can really curate it down to a playlist that, that makes sense to the brand or, uh, you know, the whole uh, shopping experience. So we signed a deal with, with uh, it's called KPN, by the way, the, the telco. So KPN is uh, now reaching out to their, their audience with uh, Tribe of Noise repertoire, uh, also included in Sonos. So KPN also, together with us and uh, Sonos, are bundling it uh, so that we, we have this big triangle with three brands that can really appeal to, to the clients. And I want to do something similar in the States. So I want to, you know, reach out to, to AT&T or Verizon or, but maybe even like a completely different company like uh, GoDaddy who has like so many uh, businesses that are signed to their service for, you know, building a website. Why don't we include, you know, streaming music services that you can just drag and drop a music service into your website, stuff like that. So I'm, I'm on the lookout of, of trying to connect with some of these bigger brands in the States. And see if we can align uh, unknown but quality musicians with their uh, their service, their cloud service, and it should be a cloud service that you and I understand by just saying yes or no, or if we dislike it after a month, that we can turn it off, or can turn it on again after a few months. So like sim simple cloud-based application for businesses where music is a big component. You know, yeah, with uh, twenty six thousand musicians in your database, you guys are ready to do a concert. I think, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you maybe you should do that. You should do an online concert. You know, yeah, the Trevor Noise online con you know concert. You know, that'd be kind of cool. I, well, I, was, I, was, 
The last time when I was in San Francisco, uh, uh, one of so one of the twenty six thousand artists in our database is uh, uh, Jeff Campbell, and Jeff Campbell was on. Uh, uh, he was featured on uh, Jimmy Kimmel Live last year. Uh, he has been touring the country. You know, he he's he's my my big role model because he's this proper indie artist that that works hard. Does a lot of shows, uh, you know, makes some money. Is never afraid of test driving new stuff. Uh, he has been supporting Tribe of Noise from the beginning, um, and he's, he even had to, you, you know, tell his performing rights organization, like, you know, this is what I do with these tracks. I want to, you know, test drive a system from Amsterdam, Holland. You know, no performing rights organization in America ever knows where Holland is. It's probably the capital of Denmark or something. Um, and then, uh, but, but his music and, and his uh, enthusiasm, and he is a live performer. Uh, performer actually is, is is now you know I'm looking at, in, into the idea of just you know why don't we record uh, uh, nice uh, gigs that were uh, featured in local bar in San Francisco with just you know 200 people in there, but we can send it out all over the world or we can do like maybe setting something up with uh, Google Hangout and, and have these, these things uh, live featured uh, as a global tribe uh, community. Hey, I'm there with you, man. You know, if you guys, if you need a Google Hangout uh, videographer, I'm there, man. You just tell me which bar to show up, I'll just shoot it live. <laughs> That's a great idea. Actually, you know, if you, I don't know what the... Uh, data is on YouTube, but I'm sure there's a lot of data out there that says, you know, these live performances are really interesting to a lot of people, you know. I, I think, again, you know, the whole thing of, of uh, being surprised by, by uh, we, we have, uh, I can't tell too much about it, but we, we, we are rebuilding a tool that we've uh, launched a couple of years ago, especially for small venues. Uh, enabling them to announce uh, uh, gigs on the spot to a wider audience than just you know the block where they where, where they are. And uh, one of the add-ons we're now building is is uh, see if we can live stream using uh, security cameras. So everybody has these security cameras, and some of them they use different networks. So why don't we use you know the security cameras uh, for a live recording of uh, small gigs? Wow, you get it. You get, you guys you think you're gonna release that by the end of the year or something like that, or you're just? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure. No, let me know. <laughs> I want to break that story. Anyway, I'll let you get going. I know you know it's getting towards the end of the day there, and I appreciate your time. But um, anyway, how how do people get you know, hold of you and hold a tribe of noise? Oh, quite easy. So tribe of noise is tribeofnoise.com. Everybody is more than welcome to sign up for free. If they want to use the music, go to not www, but go to pro.tribeofnoise.com. Also, signing up is for free only when you license stuff. You have to pay. And uh, when they get, you know, want to get in hold with me, uh, my first name is Hessel H E W S E L at tribeofnoise.com. So that's quite quite easy. And, and your Twitter handle, I, I forget. It's a bunch of numbers and an H at the end, I forgot. <laughs> okay, uh, I, will, I will give you, uh, so it's 73553, capital H. But, but if, you, if, you, if you type it on a calculator, and if you turn the calculator upside down, it says Hessel. Okay, that's a new one. I, I've never heard of anything like that, but I love that. That was great. Okay, wow. I'll have to put that into my um, piece when I'm writing this thing. <laughs> This is how creative this guy is. <laughs> but anyway, thanks again. I appreciate that. And uh, hey, good luck to you. And hope, uh, you know, let's catch up on a, a live shoot, um, you know, here in San Francisco when you're here next, when maybe you announce this new service that you guys are developing or something like perfect, that. Perfect, perfect. All right. Well, anyway, that was Hessel Van Arshot uh, of uh, Tribe of Noise, helping musicians and media and media professionals connect and uh thanks for joining us everyone this is greg Gloria, ak social greg on twitter for the nerd soccer media network where we believe in tech startups design and you thanks for joining us everyone and be careful out there hey thanks again hessel have a great night huh cheers